The Mayan calendar is a time plan. And it's a time plan that defines uh, significant shift points in the different aspects of evolution that our entire planet and the entire universe has undergone. And uh, if you go back 30 years in time, hardly any of this information was known. And it was considered more like an ancient uh, superstition or something of that kind. Uh, today, we know that <clears throat> it defines a number of uh, waves um, that have been propelling evolution on our planet. So it is something that has a lot to tell about um, how the human mind has changed, the human ways of thinking has changed over time. Uh, but it also has a lot to do about uh, to, with our technological inventions, uh, economics, ups and downs, um, all kinds of phenomena that we previously might have thought were just the results of uh, our own creativity or random processes. And now we may see uh, it actually matches these changes that uh, humanity has undergone, actually matches the significant time points in the Mayan calendar. So it's a very fundamental aspect of knowledge that is now increasingly becoming important. Well, it, you might say that each of these waves and there are basically nine waves in the Mayan calendar system, tends to define and create a certain human being. And that's why we can understand shift points in the calendar, or, or the, sorry, uh, that's why we may understand um, the shift points in human history, because these are actually the results or the human being changing at a almost predetermined rhythm. Now, each of these waves then tend to create a specific kind of human being. One with a particular kind of re creativity, one with a particular perception of reality, and what is happening here is that we have come to the highest level of the nine waves, the ninth wave, as you, as you mentioned. And this is a wave that creates a human being uh, that has no filters in how she perceives reality. And for this reason, this new human being will create a new kind of a world. And the first signs that we see of this change, which started March 9th of this year, is really significant disturbances to the world. Uh, you might even say that we're going into a period of chaos. And this is not really surprising because uh, the, the systems of our world, especially the socio-economic uh, systems, but also the kind of technological solutions that we have chosen, you know, like, the, like the use of, of fossil fuels or nuclear power and so forth, those may not be, and I don't think they are, completely consistent uh, with the mindset of the new human being that is emerging through the effects of this ninth wave. I believe there will be, as this new human being is being born, you might say, is being created with a, an outlook of life, essentially one of unity consciousness, uh, 
I then believe that there will be much chaos um, because uh, for this very reason I, I just mentioned that most of our socio-economic structures are not consistent with this new frame of consciousness that is emerging. And uh, that's, of course, in, in very general term. What is chaos? Well, in this case, it is something that uh, um, is the result of the uh, contradiction between the new wave with the kind of human being that is being formed, uh, a human being without filters, and the old systems. Um, at the same time, as we may see this as a chaotic period, I think we should recognize that a new world with new relationships between the human beings and between the human beings and nature uh, can only come out of this kind of a chaos. That's the only state that give, can give birth to this kind of a new world. And uh, so, um, many prophecies talk about this, like, for instance, the Hopi prophecy talk about the, a, a period of purification. And you have similar ideas in the Christian and the Muslim uh, uh, scriptures. Um, and uh, really, though, that they are pointing to this as, as leading up to uh, a, a world of eter eternal peace or as the Hopi would talk about it, that the earth would be like a jewel in the sky. Uh, so we, we, I think the realistic thing is to look upon this particular time, 2011, six months until the culmination point of the Mayan calendar on October 28, 2011, as a time where we will find, on the one hand, we will maybe think, it's very uncomfortable because the old ways of being are no longer applicable or we may not no longer be able to live with them. But at the same time, we will experience the joy of being part of this kind of a change uh, in as much as we are able to flow with the waves and surf for them and be part of them and not resist them, but actually just affirm positively speaking, what seems to be the end result of, of the entire cosmic plan that is now about to manifest.